Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and this vase or planter or whatever you want to call it with ribs nicely uh, here's another version i rendered earlier where like they do the like s curve so these are not heli helical helix curve or yes or spiral curves they are a bit more fancy for nothing advanced uh and here is a model you can see the timeline down here we're going to work through it make a new model of it uh, this contains of course a pattern of these ribs around here which uh, i use a combine at the end which i find is the most stable workflow so it's not totally parametric you know cannot change the name number of uh, ribs uh, you and then think the model updates you need to redo the combine and stuff like that but so it's a bit of a sensitive workflow anyway and we're using splines that are always very fun to use when they go flying over the screen anyway we're gonna do this uh, some design intents the design intents at these ribs uh, let's do like this you might see even uh, better with edges uh, these ribs here that runs on outside here has a constant thickness or width that runs along the whole length of the vase uh, they are uh, numbered uh, angular spread around through a circular pattern we have some spacing here some intent of course going to be that we get a smaller spacing here but there's a smaller radius of the vase and we get down here the, the opening or the spacing however between the space it gets a little bit larger and something like this at the bottom so let's do this well i have a new file here i'm going to close this one for now uh, start by saving i've got to save a file and if you want to keep things clean and nice you create a new component that's useful if you want to use this uh, vase or something in some other design yeah it's up to you i want to do it uh, first off let's start by creating a sketch from the front let's sketch front so looking from the front first thing uh, we need a height of this vase let's do a line i'm going to use a center line it's going to use this for revolve anyway so let's do it straight up let's do it 100 millimeters like that move the dimension out of the way i'm going to make the profile to the left you can make it up to the right it's up to you i do not condemn you for doing things to the left or right uh we do a line down here we do a line up here and we're going to dimension these two so this is going to be our uh, bottom and top uh outer diameter not really the outer diameter because i'm going to add the rib outwards but this gives us a good approximation of a size so it's going to do the desired dimension was around uh, eight millimeters diameter so it's going to be 40. we're going to dimension this here to be 40. and for a nice soft curve i prefer splines they are a bit naughty sometimes but let's do it we're going to start here we're going to have a one point somewhere up here let's give us about that slightly curved shape and one up here Gonna finish the spine, I'm gonna make a line, I'm gonna do a change over here in the sketch palette to construction. From here, just gonna make it straight in, makes it a bit easier to see things, and then dimension this. And the design intent was to make it uh, 100 millimeters, so we can do that 50. And of course, escape to turn off a dimension where we can play around a bit with this. Uh, if you're gonna free the print this, if you push it down too far, we're gonna get a bit of overhang with problems. And of course, we get some really strange geometry if we push it all the way down. So let's find it somewhere. That looks good. I like to add a dimension. I add a dimension because uh, or the reason I have a dimension is because I want to avoid by mistake moving things around. 32, let's make it 33 millimeters. That's a good number. Uh, if I do not add a dimension here, I can by mistake click on this line, even if I'm not in edit sketch and move it around and the whole model starts to update and things can go bad or crash or happen other fun things. Finish sketch. Uh, we have a revolve cup here, so let's click on revolve and fusion understands because I made this a center line and made a profile it understands I want to revolve these things and it's going to be full and I hit OK. SM keyboard start typing in shell which you of course have up in the menu it's up to you I love using the shortcut menu design code shortcuts shell select the top face now we're going to select the wall thickness specifically at the bottom and around so we're going to do it like two millimeters if you want more thickness at the base you can of course do an off oops sorry i can't spell to offset face you can use offset face take this here and just pull this lower section up here as much as you want we're not going to do that now going to open up a component our bodies and our sketches and have a look so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hide the sketch for now 
and have a look so this is our base shape now we're going to start sketching uh, some useful geometry we want to somehow uh, get a curve that uh, goes through this here we're going to do create a sketch i'm going to create it from the top i'm going to make a circle i want this circle to be a known diameter and it has to be bigger than the base so i'm going to call this cylinder od i'm going to name the parameter or the dimension and uh, let's make it i think 120 should cover it yeah let's do that it's not that important the exact size it needs to be a bit larger that's the only thing that's important for me still 120 i'm going to finish sketch we're now going to do an extrude of it i'm not going to do one more sketch we're going to extrude this i'm going to use surfaces in a short time here and when i use surfaces for things like this i want to make them a bit over model over oversized i want to make them bigger than this uh, base part here create a sketch from the front here gonna hide the body turn on our first sketch here and projecting p for project projecting this line here like that gonna hide the sketch again so this is the height of our base i'm gonna add a small line here let's make it 10 millimeters go do a line down here let's do that one 10 millimeters so i'm gonna make this uh, curve i made it slightly higher than the final base finish sketch turn on our circular sketch here and e for extrude we're going to extrude this profile yes but we do not want to start here we want to start uh, start we're going to change that to uh, object so we're going to select the bottom point here and the distance here is going to be two objects select the top point you can see the extrude starts from the bottom here all the way up we're going to do okay and hide the sketch for now like that and we have now made a cylinder that's larger than a vase. If we turn on a vase and change the view, we can see that the vase is now totally inside of a cylinder. Hide the vase, switch visibility like that. We're gonna create a tangent plane. Uh, I think it's easier to work on a tangent plane. It's up to you how I want to do it. We're gonna turn on our region, select a reference plane. Let's do it on this here. If you select the front and back plane, you're gonna end up. I uh, ended up on the right side here, yeah, but doesn't matter. Let's do it like that. Not important on each what sides you're doing. Just we want to have it locked down. Create a sketch on this here. Hide the body, and we're gonna turn on our sketch here that has this long line. We've added the center line. We've added lines. We're gonna do P for project again. I'm gonna select the top point and the bottom point like that, and hide that sketch do a line just something like uh, this and i do a line something like uh, this gonna make these two lines equal and now we're gonna add a dimension uh, the extension from here to here is the same as the uh, amount of angular twist we want to our rib but around not the angular pattern the angular twist gonna do d for dimension and select the two outer points here go down here so let's say we want to twist a uh, our rib is not totally accurate because it's moving towards the center so approximately 30 millimeter uh, 30 degree twist so we're going to do 30 divided by 360 and we're now going to multiply by the, the circumference of our cylinder so we're going to multiply start typing in our cylinder so we get the dimension for that and multiply by pi remember large letters in pi pi large and finish sketch Oh, sorry, not finish, get, uh, just finish our parameter. Sorry, I popped out. We finished. So we have here, we have an equation. You can see it once again. So have it here. Now we're going to create a spline once again. We do a fit spot spline again. We can do control point spline. We'll do that. It's up to you. So I'm going to start from this point here. And you can add more points. If you want to do an S shape, I'm going to do one simple curve. And as always, uh, less points in a spline is always better. So I'm going to simply select the two points and finish. And then use the horizontal vertical constraint and turn this here to horizontal vertical. You can, of course, do the same in this side if you want to do that. I don't want to do that now. I just want this curve to curve in one direction. Hit O on the keyboard for offset. I'm going to offset this spline with one millimeter is good enough. We offset, it happens to be to the right. The blue is already right, the red is a new one. Hit OK. But we still, after fusion, does some thinking because it move this. This is the mention of moves a slight outwards and uh, we do not have a closed profile down here we have a line but up here we are missing a line so l on the keyboard connect the two dots and we have a profile finish sketch turn on our body cylinder you can name the bodies if you want easier to see things 
S on the keyboard, find the emboss command, the profile. Of course, our little spline thing here, the face, it's gonna be outside face here. And uh, depth, anything you want. I'm doing it outwards, so it's gonna be emboss, it's gonna be two millimeter outwards. I say okay, that's not that sensitive. I like that. I'm now gonna find the sketch that had the center line. This one here that has the full center line, the center line plus the extra lines, and I have my body turned on. Skip over to surface tool. We are gonna create a loft, and the loft gonna start with the edge of the boss. I did. It's important thing here to select the correct edge. You can see the edge that goes all the way up here. So this is the basically the line we sketch first. The other side of this emboss is the offset. So we're gonna select this here. Then I make sure that chain selection is off, and I simply click on this line, uh, this line, turn slightly, and uh, this line like that. I can hide the body now and see things. We can see we are creating a curved surface body. I hit OK. So the thing is, the closer we move to the center, the more it's going to be a straight line. So it's a bit of change of shape. It's really hard to get this totally accurate in any way you want. Or in a, if you want 100% control, you need to use other software. Anyway, turn on our body too. There's a cylinder. Right click and select remove because it's done its job. Going to hide the sketch turn on this vase body we are now going to do some uh, trimming and let's see we can do this we're going to use the trim sometimes i need to do offset i need to do offset face because i need to control things so we're going to do offset surface tool still down here we have a, a surface offset which is going to create a surface body that is offset from the faces that we select we can of course be zero first of all inside face of a vase here just simply select here the thing is i'm going to use thicken on this bottle later and going to thicken in two directions so i want this surface to be slightly uh, not protruding through the inner face of the vase so i'm going to do that minus 0 0.5 so you can see the surface body goes slightly inside like that i'm immediately going to use it so i'm going to do trim select the body i created and select the inside here and click OK. You can see it automatically extends out the shape and trims away things. With this surface body has done its work, so click, mark it, right click and select remove. I'm going to do the same thing on the outside. Here are the portrait parties, select this face. This is going to give us the dimension of the ribs, so let's do that. Let's do it 3 millimeters, quite extensive ribs. Hit OK. And do once again trim the newly created body, trim away the outside, hit OK. This body is done its work, so we're going to do remove of that too. So we're still left with one solid body and surface body. As you can see, the surface body is still a bit too high. It protrudes up and down, and that's totally correct. And now we're going to do uh, thicken. You can find it in the menus or S on the keyboard. Tie, start typing in thicken, and you will find thicken. Select the surface body. I know we've done this a couple of times, so a few and slight remember here. The direction needs to be symmetric, and what we need to remember about thickness when we do symmetric it, that it adds the uh, thickness on both sides. So I have one in thickness, so the rib is going to be two millimeters in thickness. And you can see we have got our little twisted rib. It starts basically all this align, almost aligned with the axis down here, axis of the center of the face, and ends at a small angle. Symmetric uh, operation, new body. Yes, thank you. Hit OK. So now we have made our solid body. So now we're going to trim the top and bottom. Go over to our solid tab. Do split body. Select. Oh, we're going to do one thing more. I did cancel now. I have a surface body here that I don't need anymore. So we're going to do immediately do remove of that. Try to keep your browser clean. Remove things you don't need. Do not use delete. That's going to crash things. Remove things. Uh, split body we were on. Split body. Select our little rib body. Splitting tools. I'm going to zoom in and select the top face here. You can say it tries to cut it up the top. I'm going to turn on our model and select the bottom face and hit OK. I'm going to turn on and off our radian so it hides that. You can see we got suddenly two more bodies. This body here, that's number seven. And body down here, that's number eight. So we're going to hold down control, select both, right click and do remove. Fusion starts to think. Uh, we could do a combine here and try to make like a pattern of uh, 
phases but fusion often crashes you can now also see why i did the inside uh, offset surface slightly out you can see this phase here there is a risk if i do this uh, totally aligned with uh, the cut off the surface aligned with the inside phase and then add thickness this uh, surface so solid body will protrude inside the vase and create ugly geometry uh, anyway we are back to the circular pattern I'm gonna pattern the body and we should normally pattern features and stuff like the tray to make but it often gets very sensitive with pattern so anyway S the keyboard we're gonna do circular pattern we're gonna circle pattern bodies our little oh sorry cancel before we do anything else we're gonna do a save circular patterns are always dangerous with faceless so first of all we do a save so we don't lose what all most we are done now I have auto save activated but it can miss things so save S on the keyboard now we're gonna do circular pattern circular pattern of bodies select a little beautiful ribbon body uh, axis gonna be we can simply just select a round edge here I have earlier done those 50, but I think I want to do them 55. Is that too many? If you think gonna crash with me, 56, 60, 60 looks good. So let's do that. Slightly more rips this time. So you can see we have a bunch of bodies now. Simply use Windows Select. Uh, you have selection up here. Make sure it says, it says Windows of this square or rectangle thing. If not, click on the menu and do window select, the same as number one on keyboard. That's why selection sometimes changes you by mistake, hit one of these numbers. Simply select everything, select the combined feature, and pray that Fusion doesn't crash. Let Fusion do some thinking. It normally will do a target body and rest of the tool bodies. I'm going to do a join operation. And Fusion hates uh, faces like this, cutting for everything. So it's gonna take some time to do some thinking. Is there enough of thinking? Yes, we hit OK. And let Fusion do some more thinking. I love how it always thinks first, and then you say OK, and then it starts thinking again. 61 bodies, that's correct. One center vase and 60 ribs. Let's see if it can, yeah, it can manage to create it. Uh, this depends a bit on how much memory you have in your computer, how good it is to do and things like this. So, we now have a vase or a planter with ribs. Nice learning everything. Uh, you can go back and forth and change things. You have to be careful with the circular pattern and stuff like this. But we can go in and change our parameters. We can change like uh, the ribs we made. Where are you? Uh, surface office surface offset 2 it must be that's a 3 millimeter so let's say we want these to be 1 millimeter longer we can change that to 4 and go grab a cup of coffee by uh, fusion do some thinking you can see it updates the bodies does some thinking about the combine and it should pop out and make the ribs longer uh, you always need to be careful with a pattern because they can crash fusion in the most service way no it worked hit ok so the ribs are now four millimeters so you can change some things but basically the only thing you can be careful to change is uh, uh, the number of ribs because you have to redo the combine and of course you can go back and change the sketch and move the shape around if you want to change things like that or make another emboss where you do like the s pattern that i had earlier here so it goes in two direction or whatever you want use it for a flow play around have some fun and leave me some nice comments take care see you around and goodbye.